books of power have been added to Star Giovanni 1.6. Each book will give you a very powerful passive ability. In this video, I'm going to show you how to obtain every single book of power and how best to use them. Let's start with the book of power you can get in the Adventurer's Guild. Just to the room here behind Marilyn, there's a free book of power that's called the Mapping Cave Systems and it gives a 50% discount on Marilyn's item recovery service, which is absolutely amazing. How many times have you went into this called cavern or the hardened version of the mines to lose your precious diamonds, prismatic shards and galaxy weapons? This book of power will take some of the sting out of defeat. With the mapping cave systems we can now go into the skull caverns and other hardened versions of the mines. Get killed, not worry too much about it. It's not like it's a Dark Souls game, right? <laughs> Let's go to Marilyn right now and check out his item recovery service. As we can see, it's only 18 gold now for our precious 18 stone, not the usual 36 gold, which is an absolute game changer. Next up, let's talk about the next book of power we can get here from our lovely dwarf friend. It's called the Dwarvish Safety Manual. It's only 4,000 gold. And the beauty of this is that it reduces bomb damage by a whopping 25%. How many times have you went into various versions of the mines? Drop some bombs to clear away nodes to get those precious resources only to damage yourself in the process. Now, you won't have to worry too much. 25% reduction is huge. It's a lot of defense towards bomb damage and it could make a difference between life and death when you're spamming those bombs and you forget to look at your health bar. We've now taken a book of power and just detonated a bomb and we take four damage right there. And that's a very small piece of damage so it just makes doing those skull cavern runs a little bit more pleasant. The next book of power is called Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Thick. You can get this from hoeing up artifact spots. It gives a permanent increase to our defense. Now a plus one defense is nothing to sniff at. Every single piece of defense that we can acquire will dramatically reduce damage we take from enemies. Combine this with the dragon skin boots, but we can also go further. We can also equip two crab shell rings to make the ultimate defense character. Let's see how much damage we take from some of the harder hitting mobs in the game when we stack tons of defense on top of each other. What we have here now are two crab shell rings and two rings of Yoba. We also have the best defense boots in the game, the dragon scale boots. We also have the passive plus one defense from the book of power. We are also going to take some buffs as well to increase our defense. We're going to take the magic rock candy, which will give us an additional five defense. It's also worth noting too that we could have went a step further and enchanted our weapon with defense, but because we have so much defense already, it's not really needed. Most of the damage these enemies do to us should be minimized to more or less one. And as we can see here, these enemies aren't hidden for much at all. You could go away, have a nice cup of tea, come back and still be alive because these enemies don't do a whole lot of damage to us. That is how good that Book of Power actually is. Plus one defense is a very handy thing to come across, especially early in the game. The next Book of Power we're going to talk about is called the Monster Compendium. And this can be obtained from just killing monsters. Now it is quite rare and I have had to kill quite the number of monsters to make this drop. But monsters with this book activated have a chance to drop double the loot, which is absolutely amazing. A lot of the monsters, especially in Skull Caverns, all have unique loot tables. A lot of them, if not all of them, drop prismatic shards. A lot of the monsters also drop their own unique food buffs as well. For example, the serpents drop spicy eels. The mummies, they can drop miners' treats. The iridium bats can drop energy tonics. So it's always nice to get double the loot. We just wiped out a load of mummies here and look at all the cloth that we're going to get and the solar essences. And that's going to make for quite the profit. The next book of power we're going to look at is the Diamond Hunter. This can be obtained from the dwarf in the volcano cave at floor number 5. Now you need 10 diamonds to purchase this. But this book of power is absolutely insane. It gives you a chance to mine a diamond from a regular node. Combine this with the geologist perk and you can get 2 diamonds instead of 1. We'll also take the Gemologist so that the diamonds are worth 30% more. So it's a nice combination. As we can see, I'm just mining up in regular nodes. Two diamonds pop out just like that. Just so you know, if you use bombs, this perk will not activate. You have to use your pickaxe. The next book of power that we're going to get is from our lovely raccoon friend, but we have to start the quest chain to get it. In order for us to start the quest chain, we have to unlock the greenhouse. Once the greenhouse is unlocked, there's a 10% chance this question will activate every day. Once you repair the tree stump using 100 pieces of hardwood, you're going to get a lovely, cool, cozy neighbor known as the raccoon. The raccoon is always hungry and will ask you for items. The items will change depending on what season it is. Because we're in summer, he's asking for a smoked large mound bass. Most of the time, if not all of the time, 
he will normally ask for a smoked something. So it'll be some sort of smoked version of a fish. Once we give him those items, he will say, here Bobo, take this. He will give us Summer Squatch Seeds. We just have to do one more quest to get the next book of power. So eventually he will find himself a wife. The wife sells amazing items. And I will make a video about that soon. But let's go back to the book of power here. He's looking for spice berry jelly. He's also looking for some other pickled goods as well. These also change depending on the season. Once we complete that request, the next reward he will give us is the raccoon journal. This is absolutely amazing. This will increase your chances of getting mixed seeds every time you whack those weeds in the game. And there's loads of areas in Stardew Valley where you can go and farm tons of weeds. For example, all around Cindersap Forest, your farm. You can also go to floor 81 in the mines. You can go to the mutant bug lair. There's tons of places you can go to get the full effects of this book of power. This is the mutant bug lair at the moment. And as we can see, we're getting tons of mixed seeds back. But we don't just get mixed seeds. We're now getting the new type of mixed seeds as well. We're getting the mixed flower seeds. The next book of power can be obtained from cutting down trees. Now, if you're lucky, and you get this at the very start of the game, consider your first playthrough to be extremely overpowered, because you just won't need wood for the rest of the game. Woody's Secret is an amazing book of power. Now, it only gives a 5% chance for trees to yield double the wood, but this can be stacked upon some of the powerful foraging corps, especially the ones that allow you to get more wood from trees. The Book of Power even works on the hardwood trees. It basically works on any sort of a tree that can be felled. So that's most trees in the game. And once you start cutting down these trees with an Iridium Axe, because it only takes a few swings, you'll notice hundreds more wood in your pocket that you wouldn't have had initially. Next up, we're talking about Jewels of the Sea. Finding treasure chests have a chance to yield raw now. And this can be picked up in a fishing treasure chest. And you can actually get this fairly early in the game if you primarily focus on fishing. Normally, it's going to give you raw based on the fish that you've caught. So if you go for the more lucrative fish, you can make extra profits by selling that raw or even changing it into aged raw. So fishing has become much more lucrative now with the 1.6 update. Just so you know too, that if you get copies of these books and you've already activated them, keep them, you can trade them into the bookseller later. Next up, we're going to go to the Squid Fest event. If we capture eight squids, we will unlock another new powerful book. And it's going to be called the art of crabbing and it just means that the crab pots have a 25% chance to yield double the resources for us and this makes the crab pots a little bit more lucrative and the great thing about this is if you use the right fishing perks for example if we take trapper here we can make crab pots for less and if we take the lower master crab pots no longer require bait I don't recommend the mariner because trash is now so much more useful than it used to be because of the raccoons moving in they will take some trash items off you and give you back really nice resources. If you take the lore master though, you'll never have to worry about bait. Crab pots are now more interesting than ever because the new NPC raccoon, his wife will sell you items that need trash items in return. So it's now worth your time focusing on stocking up on trash items. The next book of power is a little bit of a secret. There's a secret entrance here just to the right of Clint's workshop. Now you do need at least a steel axe to get you the first hurdle, which is a big log here. Once you break open the log, you will then need a steel pickaxe to get rid of this big stone. But once you get through that, just behind this tree, it's a very sneaky, well-hidden golden trash can. Upon opening this, we get the alleyway buffet. This is an absolutely amazing book of power. It would give you a much better chance to find items in the trash. Now, they might not be the best items in the world, but they're items nonetheless. We just picked up a soggy newspaper there. That can be recycled into a clot. You get that early on, that's a lot of money. Clot is worth a lot. Broken glasses, they can be given to the raccoon's wife. They can also be recycled into refined quartz for sprinklers. Next up, let's talk to Marnie here. She has the next book of power, the animal catalogue. You can now access Marnie's shop when she's not around. This is what we needed years ago because Marnie's never around she's always in her room looking at Mary Lewis's underwear or she's out and about doing something she's never in the actual shop when you need her most and the thing about Marnie is she's the only NPC in the game that sells hay so if you have a lot of animals you're so dependent on her if you don't have a good silo setup but with this new book of power you can go into her shop anytime you want and you can access all of Marnie's functionalities you can purchase animals you can adopt pets you can even look at her supplies it's just an absolutely amazing book of power to get and it was a much needed, much needed change in the 1.6. Next up, let's talk about the next book of power, which is the book of mystery. 
So new items have come to Stardew Valley 1.6, which are mystery boxes. This book will increase the odds of you finding a mystery box. Mystery boxes come from doing all sorts of activities, from mining to fishing to farming. You pick up lots of mystery crates. But we're going to open up more mystery crates. There's one more book of power we can get by opening up these. You can also get it from the artifact troves as well. It's called the Treasure Appraisal Guide. This is absolutely amazing. This dramatically increases, I mean dramatically, increases the price of artifacts. It will now turn artifacts into an actual business if you wanted to be an artifact farmer. You could. Let's take a look at the strange doll here. Normally it's worth a thousand gold, but with the Book of Power, it's now worth three thousand gold, which is absolutely amazing. So you could potentially make a living off artifacts if you wanted to do some sort of a unique artifact playthrough. The next book of power is called the Friendship 101 and you can only get this to my knowledge by getting price tickets and putting them into Mayor Lewis's price ticket machine. Once you've put in enough price tickets you will get that book of knowledge. There is a sneaky price ticket up here behind the book vendor. Now we can't see the chest because there's a balloon there but you just need a copper axe to clear away the tree stub. You can get into this area and pick up a free price ticket as early as you get that lovely copper axe. You can also get price tickets from doing the Help Wanted quests and also from the community quests. You can also get price tickets from doing the events too every season. So once we obtain the Friendship 101, it will give us bonus friendship points every time we do a friendly deed for an NPC. There's a lot of recipes that we need for perfection that the NPCs will give us once we've reached certain friendship points with them. So this book will make our lives much easier when it comes to attaining perfection, getting married, and getting those lovely free items in the mail off your best friends. With that book, all the NPCs will be your best friend. Next up, the rest of the books, you can just buy him off the book merchant. He has Way of the Wind Part 1. This gives you a minus increase your movement speed. There's also Horse the Book. This gives you an increase to speed when you're mounted on your horse. You also have Old Scissor Legs. This gives you movement speed bonus when you run through grass and crops. That's, that's actually very handy. There's also the price catalogue. I've been using this all along. It basically just shows you the price of items when you hover over them with your mouse. I recommend you get that book as early as possible if you have 3,000 gold to spare because it makes planning way easier. Once we learn all these books of powers, I am going to show you a really cool speed crit build. Now, when you purchase the first way of the wind part one, just exit his inventory and go back in and he'll have the part two. That'll give you another movement speed. The Queen of Saws cookbook isn't the book of power, but I just want to highlight it. If you purchase this, you will learn all of the Queen of Sauce recipes. You won't learn all of the NPC given recipes, just the Queen of Sauce recipes. That is all of the books of power covered, but we're not going to finish the video here. I want to show you just how overpowered this additional movement speed is. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back here now and we're going to respec our combat perks. We're going to take the combat perks that will increase our critical chance. So we're going to go with Scout. Critical chance increased by 50%. We're also going to take Desperado. Critical strikes are deadlier. It just means that if we crit, it doesn't matter what we fight, it's going to die very quickly. Now, we could take Acrobat as well, but I prefer Desperado. We're now going to merge some rings together. Let's get the Aquamarine Ring and the Savage Ring. So the Aquamarine Ring will give us increased crit chance. The Savage Ring will give us a further movement speed when enemy dies. We're then going to merge a Hot Java Ring with another crit chance ring. So enemies will drop Triple Shot Expressos and Coffees just to keep our speed sustained up. We're also going to equip an Iridium Needle here with three Aquamarines. This will dramatically further increase our crit chance because this build is all about pulling off critical strikes as frequently as possible. We're also going to enchant it with the Artful Enchant so that we can use this lovely Needle's special ability a lot more. We're also going to use the Artifact Golden Spur which gives a 10 second bonus movement speed if we kill enemies along with a Triple Shot Espresso and a Magic Rock Candy. Look how quick our character is now. This is one of the fastest characters you're ever going to see grace the halls of the regular mines. Our character is an absolute bullet. Similar to the lovely Irish rugby player Bundy Aki, our character is just a train. Nothing can stop our character. Nothing. Even though this build is more or less a single target DPS build, because you can dispatch enemies so quickly, it's actually a decent build for cave crawling. This is just what the horse looks like with the speed buffs. As we can see, the horse is extremely fast. Just ignore the crops in the background. That's because I don't have the randomizer mod active at the moment. I also want to say a huge shout out to my channel members. Thanks so much for supporting me, everyone. And if you do like Stardew Valley content, 
just tickle that subscribe button, it really helps me out. Also, don't be afraid to leave a comment and ask questions, I'll reply to the best of my abilities. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you all have a super cosy week. I'll see you in the next video.